What if I told you that in the next 20 minutes, you'll build not just one, but two complete applications that work together. A recipe parser API that can extract ingredients and instructions from any recipe URL. And a meal planning app that automatically generates your shopping lists. Most developers think building APIs requires months of backend experience, but here's what they don't know. With the right AI tools, you can go from zero to a fully functional REST API in under an hour. I'm about to walk you through the exact process I use to create a recipe parser API that scrapes any recipe website, uses OpenAI to intelligently extract structured data, and serves a true clean REST endpoints. But we're not stopping there, because what good is an API without something that actually uses it? That's why we're also building a complete meal planning application that calls our API, saves recipes to weekly meal plans, and generates organized shopping lists by ingredient category. By the end of this this video, you'll have two working applications, a deep understanding of API development with AI, and a system you can actually use to plan your meals this week. The best part, we're building everything from scratch, so even if you've never touched Flask or worked with APIs before, you'll be able to follow along. Let's dive in. When you're building anything that talks to the web, uses AI, and needs to support another app on top of it, the setup stage matters more than people realize. If the environment is messy or incomplete, everything you build afterward becomes harder. Bugs pile up, things break for no reason, and you spend more time fixing the project than actually building it. So before we touch any recipe parsing or AI logic, we're gonna set up the project the right way so the rest of the build feels smooth. Now, to get the base ready, let's ask Claude Cohn to do the installation work for us. Create a Python project for a recipe parser API. Uh, don't build any functionality yet, but just install all the necessary packages for creating REST APIs, web scraping, and AI integration. Make sure everything is installed accordingly and the project structure is correct. Again, don't build functionality yet. Just install all the needed dependencies we'll use for the project. Claude handles everything, setting up the folders, installing the scraping libraries, the API frameworks, open AI tools, environment variable support, compression libraries, and all the pieces we'll end up using later. When it's done, we're left with a clean, organized project that's ready for real development instead of a patchwork of files. But before our API can actually understand recipes, it needs access to a language model. And that starts with getting an OpenAI API key. This key basically acts as the bridge between our project and OpenAI's models. Without it, the scraping function we build later won't have anything to pass the recipe text into. So this step is essential. To set it up, head over to OpenAI and create a new project. You can name it anything. I'll call mine Recipe Parser API just to keep things organized. Inside that project, create a new API key. Same idea here, name it however you want. I'll name mine Parser API so I know exactly what it's used for. During the creation process, you'll see permission options for the key. In real-world development, you should restrict these to only the permissions you need for safety. But since this is a demo and we want everything to run smoothly, we'll set it to all for now. And once the key is generated, copy it. Next, go back to your project and open the env.example file. This is where we store sensitive information safely instead of hard coding it in our script. Paste your key into the appropriate field, save the file, and you're done. Now, our recipe parser API has access to OpenAI, and we're ready to start building the core features that rely on it. All right, every recipe parsing app needs one thing before anything else, a way to actually pull the recipe text from the website. The AI can only work with whatever we give it, so this step is all about teaching our project how to grab the content from a recipe page and hand it over cleanly. And think of it as giving our API the ability to read a web page the same way we do when we scroll through a recipe online. So here, I'm asking Claude Code to build that foundation piece. The exact prompt I'm gonna use is build a web script function that fetches recipe content from URLs, handle different website layouts, and extract the main recipe text, add error handling for invalid URLs and inaccessible pages. Claude starts generating the function, and pretty quickly, you'll see the code appear, a full scraper that sends a request to the URL, downloads the page, and searches through the HTML to find the part that actually contains the recipe. Since recipe websites all structure their pages a little differently, 
the function includes logic to handle these variations, along with safety checks for things like broken links or videos with no readable content. After this, our project officially has the ability to fetch raw recipe data from any URL we feed it, but nothing is being parsed or analyzed yet. This step is purely about collecting the text so the AI can make sense of it later. Now that the scraper is ready, the next feature we build will turn this raw text into clean, structured ingredients and instructions that our meal planner can actually use. Recipe websites are all over the place in terms of layout, so trying to code custom rules for every site isn't realistic. This is where we bring in AI to do the heavy lifting. We no longer have to manually search through the HTML for ingredients or instructions. We can let the model read the raw content and extract everything cleanly for us. So to build this part, what we're gonna do is tell Claude code the exact prompt. Build an AI parser using OpenAI that takes raw recipe text and extracts structured data. Pull out ingredients as a list, instructions as steps, cooking times, servings, and the recipe title. Return everything in JSON format with proper error handling. Once the prompt is sent, Claude puts together a function that understands the messy text from the scraper and formats it into a neat JSON structure. It handles different writing styles, unexpected formatting, and even incomplete sections by returning whatever information is available without breaking the app. Now, two essential functions are working side by side. One collects the raw content from the website, and the other interprets it into clean, usable recipe data. From here, the next step is to connect everything through a REST API, so other applications can interact with the system easily. The next big step is turning everything into a real API. This is what lets other applications send in a recipe URL and instantly get back structured data in return. What I want to do here is give our tool a proper interface that any app can call over HTTP, whether it's a mobile app, another backend service, or even a simple testing script. Let's ask Claude Code the exact prompt to build this layer. Create REST API endpoints for the recipe parser. Build a post endpoint that accepts recipe URLs and returns parsed data. Add a health check endpoint. Include core support, proper error responses, and clear API documentation. Now, after sending this, Claude creates the full set of endpoints, wiring the scraper and parser together inside a clean post root that takes a URL, processes it, and returns everything the client needs. It also sets up essentials like cores, so different applications can talk to the API without issues, plus a basic health check route so we can confirm the server is running. And there we have it, a fully functioning recipe parser API. Any application can now call it and instantly receive ingredients, instructions, nutritional info, and more. But we are not stopping there. We can now start expanding its capabilities and add features that make the data even more useful. A lot of recipe websites list details like calories, protein, carbs, and fats and having that information available makes the API far more useful, especially for anyone tracking macros or planning meals with specific nutrition goals. We don't want our API to just return ingredients and instructions. We want the parser to capture whatever nutritional info the website provides and pass it back cleanly in the final JSON. In order to add this feature, let's tell Claude Code this exact prompt. Enhance the AI parser to extract nutrition information when available. Look for calories, proteins, carbs, uh, fats, and other nutrition facts. If the recipe doesn't include this data, return null values. Update the API response to include a nutrition section. After running this, Claude updates the parsing logic so the AI checks the scraped text for any nutrition-related content and formats it properly in the response. This enhancement makes the API much better suited for meal planning apps, fitness tools, or anyone who cares about what's actually in their food. Before moving on to the meal planning app, we need to make sure our recipe parser API actually behaves the way it should. At this point, we've built several core components, the scraper, the AI parser, the endpoints, and the nutrition extractor. So running a dedicated test script helps us confirm that everything connects properly and returns clean structured data. The idea here is simple. Start the server, feed it a few recipe URLs, and check whether the output includes all the fields we expect. Let's ask Claude Code to uh, create testing functionality for the API. Build a test script that starts a server and sends requests with different recipe URLs. Show the parse results clearly including all fields like ingredients, instructions, and nutrition data. 
Claude generates the full testing script automatically, which gives us a quick and repeatable way to validate the API without manually calling endpoints one by one. Now that the script is ready, we can run it in the terminal using python test underscore api underscore complete dot py. The script launches the local server, begins processing the sample recipe links, and prints the parts results right in the console. You can see each step happening clearly. The server initializes, the URLs get processed, and the output comes back with ingredients, instructions, and nutrition data all filled in. Every test finishes successfully, which confirms that the API is stable and ready to be hooked into our meal planning app in the next step. Now that the API is fully tested and working, it's time to give it an actual interface that people can use. The goal here is to build the front end of our meal planning app. Something simple and clean where a user can paste a recipe link, press a button, and instantly see everything our parser pulled from the website. We'll be needing Streamlit here because it lets us build a full web interface in just a few lines of Python without worrying about HTML or complex frameworks. In order to generate the foundation of the app, we need to ask Claude Code exactly to create a Streamlit app for meal planning, add a clean interface with a title and description, include an input field for recipe URLs, and a button to parse recipes. When users submit a URL, call our recipe parser API and display the parse recipe nicely with ingredients, instructions, and nutritional info if available. Claude sets up the layout, the input field, the API call, and the display sections automatically. Once it finishes running, we have a working interface that talks directly to our parser. Here, you can see the app running locally with everything neatly arranged on the page, a title at the top, a URL field, and a section where the parse results appear. To test it, let's paste in a recipe for a cheesy hash brown casserole. After a short loading moment, the app pulls the data from our API and displays the ingredients, the instructions, and the nutrition info clearly. It's always satisfying to see the API and the interface connect seamlessly like this because it means the system is working exactly the way we want it. Right now, the app can parse a single recipe and show all the details, but it is still treating each one as a one-off. In real life though, you're probably thinking in terms of full weeks, not just one dish at a time. I want to turn the parser into something you can actually use for planning your meals and groceries by letting you save recipes into a weekly plan and automatically turn all their ingredients into one combined shopping list. Let's ask Claude to add meal planning features to the app, create an add to meal plan button that saves recipes, show all saved recipes in a sidebar organized by days, add a generate shopping list button that combines all ingredients from saved recipes and organizes them by category, include a copy button for the shopping list. Once Claude Code finishes adding those pieces, everything clicks together into a full meal planning system. The app now talks to our recipe parser API in the background, lets you drop recipes straight into your weekly plan, and automatically keeps your meals and shopping organized in one place. At this point, the system is doing exactly what we want. The front end talks to the recipe parser API, saves recipes into a plan, and turns them into something you can actually use on your next grocery run. All right, this is the part I always enjoy the most, actually using the thing we've been building. After setting up the parser, wiring the API, and polishing the meal planner, it's finally time to put it all together and see how it performs with real recipes. No more theory, no more setup, just the app doing what it was designed to do. For the test run, I'm trying out three recipes, easy pecan pie, crispy air fried chicken thighs, and a cheesy hash brown casserole. We'll pull up each one on screen for a moment so you can see the source. Then I start with a pecan pie. Let's copy the link, drop it into the URL field in our app, and hit the parse button. A few seconds later, the full recipe loads in. All the ingredients, the instructions, everything scraped and parsed cleanly. Let's scroll down, add it to the meal plan, and instantly see it appear on the left sidebar under Monday. That's always a satisfying moment, watching data move through the whole system exactly the way we planned it. Next up, the chicken thighs and the hash brown casserole. Same process, paste the link, let the app work its magic, and the parse results show up just as clean as the first one. I'll assign the chicken to Friday and the casserole to Wednesday, and the sidebar fills out like a proper weekly meal plan. With everything added, let's hit generate shopping list. 
After a short wait, we get a complete shopping list with all the combined ingredients, neatly grouped by category. Honestly, it feels like cheating. Something that normally takes 10 or 15 minutes of manual typing shows up instantly, ready to copy. I'll hit the copy button. Chrome grabs the file, and that's it. And there we go. A fully working recipe parser API paired with a meal planning app that actually feels useful. You can paste in any recipe URL, it pulls the ingredients and instructions, organizes your weekly meals, and creates a clean shopping list without you lifting more than a finger. The API is flexible enough to be reused in other projects too. So this can easily grow into an even bigger system later on. Pretty cool what a small Python backend and a bit of AI can do together. All right, that's everything. You now know exactly how to build a full API in Python using AI and turn it into a real app people can actually use. Super fun project, super practical. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.